I hope y'all don't think just because it's time for me to preach, I'm about to stop that woman from praising God. This little Sunday school lesson, it'll, it'll come out after a while, but I'm trying to get us to a place where we'll do just that, where we'll open up our mouth and give him praise. Yeah, it's all right. You just take your time. Yeah, bless him, dog. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Come on, let's just all become the choir and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Teach us, Ernie. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, just call his name. Call his name. Rose of Sharon, Jesus. Lily of the Valley, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Mary's baby, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The one who hung dead, bled for me. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. One more time, one more time. Jesus, morning, Jesus, Jesus, at noonday, Jesus, Jesus, late in the midnight hour. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, all that can rest on your feet. All that can rest on your feet. Jesus in the morning. Yeah. Jesus in the noonday. Yeah. Late in the evening. In the midnight hour, Jesus said early in the morning, noonday, Jesus, in the evening, and in the midnight hour. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning to say thank you. God, if nothing else happens today, enough has already taken place. You allowed your spirit to be poured out upon all flesh. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you for your delivering power. And we thank you for the name of Jesus. Now, God, for this, the preaching moment, I pray that you would give me preaching power. That it would be none of me and all of you. God, allow the words that I speak and the thoughts that come to me to be yours. That your people would not be entertained. But God, we would be edified and we would be made better for having been here. We glorify you, we honor you. It is in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. People of God said amen. 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 Travel with me, if you will, to the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah, which is between Obadiah and Micah, or if that doesn't help you, go to the table of contents. <laughs> Amen. Book of Jonah, just a couple verses of scripture I'd like to share with you, starting in the first chapter. I'm going to be reading out of the New International Version. Verses 1 and 2, my Bible reads, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. Now, go to the third chapter, last verse, verse 10, where it reads, When God saw what they did, and how they turned from their evil ways. He had compassion and did not bring them the destruction he had threatened. For just a few moments, I'd like to talk to you from the thought, mercy in spite of mess. Mercy in spite of mess. Nisi, for the last three weeks now entering in the fourth week, we've been talking, uh, preaching from the series thought, uh, committed to the cause. We, we've been talking about being committed to the cause and, 
And the argument we've tried to make is we don't have a problem being committed. It's just what we're committed to that sometimes is the challenge. And that as the people of God, sometimes so much other stuff gets our commitment, watch this, other than God. That we don't have a problem being committed to our jobs or showing up there on time because you worried about your paycheck. Y'all ain't gonna help me. But we stroll into the household of faith whenever we get good and doggone show ready. <laughs> You're not gonna miss a payment to dominion because you don't wanna sit around with candlelight. But we'll pay our tithes and offerings if we have anything left over. Amen, lights. <laughs> Commitment is not our problem. It's what we choose to be committed to that tends to be the challenge. And so for the last few weeks, God has been showing us what it is to be committed, how Noah was committed to the cause of building the ark even when no one had ever seen rain before. How Abraham was committed to the cause of honoring God when it meant he had to cut his own foreskin. When, when Ruth was committed to the cause of supporting Naomi when Orpah decided it was more comfortable to stay where she was. But, 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 but this morning, this morning for the few moments that we have, and I promise you they won't be but a few moments because I'm on my fourth ser fifth sermon in four days. Um, today we're going to find out that as committed as we think we are, we can never be as committed as God is to us. And as much as you think you're doing God a favor by showing up to church, the favor has already been done by God. That, that, that no matter how big a check we scratch, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And we wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for God. But the truth of the matter is this, Deontay, that he has been merciful to us in spite of our mess. I, I know you can't shout right there, but, but I, I want to thank God that, that I've been in some messy places. I've done some messy things. Some stuff that should have carried me out. But thanks be to God. When justice was the call of the day, mercy stepped in. <laughs> Ooh, I wish I had some real folk in here. Kind of reminds me of a story, Brother Harris. And it's not really a story, it's the truth before God. At about seven years old, I am, uh, I'm, at the, I'm at the house uh, and and I got a phone call. I didn't get a phone call. My dad got a phone call from school. It seems as though Kenneth Riolan Jr. had been clowning in class. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Um, Y'all never met my daddy. He was 6'3", about 275, with hands like meat hooks. <laughs> and occasionally, um, he would introduce me to those hands. I know y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all believe in time out. <laughs> Bless your heart. Um, before dinner time, Dr. Branch, before dinner, Daddy said, I'm going to get you tonight. Now, anybody that's ever been down that road, you just, didn't you just quiver a little bit right there? Because I come from the old school where if he said it, Lord Jesus. This is the gospel truth. I, I, was, I was so nervous I couldn't even eat dinner that night. <laughs> Something weird happened though. Um, he was kind of dragging it out. So we sat and watched an entire episode of Sanford and Son. <laughs> and if y'all know anything like me, I just wanted it to be done. We sitting watching Sanford and Son. I can't even enjoy the show. I love Sanford and Son and Grady and Lamont and all of that, but I couldn't enjoy none of that that night. And, and as soon as Sanford and Son was over, I knew what time it was. We're sitting there and Daddy says, do you understand why? Well, yes and no. Yeah, I messed up, 
and I know I deserve this whooping, but no, I don't understand why you're going to do it. <laughs> he said, do you understand why? So it was kind of like a trick question. I was like, uh, yeah. He said, good. He went on doing what he was doing, and I'm sitting there like, when is it coming? Then he said these words. He says, you think I mean about why you're going to get a whooping? Well, yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm talking about the show. Well, here's the sad part. I hadn't watched the show closely enough to understand nothing. <laughs> he said, I should get you for what you did. And I promised you that I would. But I'm going to let you go this time. Please don't miss this. I deserved to get it. But that time, he gave me mercy. I want to talk to some folk this morning that have been in a position, not just with mom and dad, but with your heavenly father, that he should have got you. I don't mean somebody framed you. I don't mean somebody lied on you. I mean, you sure enough did the dastardly deed. And instead of giving you what you deserve, he extended mercy. You got to understand that grace is getting what I don't deserve, but mercy is not getting what I do deserve. And sometimes, with our good, saved, sanctified self, we forget that had it not been for mercy, yes. we wouldn't be here today. We walk with our nose up in the air, decide who can sit on your pew. Can I remind you that all of us are as, we, our righteousness is just as filthy rags. That none of us have the right to even don the door of the church. It was his mercy that allowed us one more day. That, that's what I believe this morning's text will help us understand. And that is that in spite of myself, matter of fact, in spite of my mess, he gave me mercy. Can I talk for just a few minutes? Y'all ain't learned yet. Can I talk for just a few minutes? Yeah, I'm not going to move on until you say something. Uh-huh, there it is. Um, th th this, 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 this book of Jonah um, so often has the primary character of its namesake, which is Jonah. Jonah, uh, the great prophet. But I would argue this morning, uh, Dr. Rainey, that Jonah might not be the primary character. That the primary character in the book of Jonah isn't Jonah or the whale, but the primary character are the people of Nineveh. I, I, I can prove it because, well, I don't want to go there yet. That, that, that Nineveh is really what this book is about. Why do you say that, Riolan? Because, because you've got to know who Nineveh is. Nineveh is the capital city of the Assyrian Empire. Uh, Nineveh is like present day Washington, D.C. or New York City. Nineveh was a major port with lots of business and commerce. And listen, it's like 42nd Street in New York City. You can get whatever you want, whatever time of the day you want it. That's what, that's what Nineveh was. Nineveh was a place that was full of pagan worship and idolatry and every kind of evil you could imagine. Yet the text suggests that God had mercy even on Nineveh. All right. um, um, and, and what I would suggest this morning is we've got to learn to be thankful to God for having mercy on us in spite of our mess. Pastor, why, why should I be so thankful to God in this season? Here's the first reason why I believe you ought to be thankful. 
for his faithfulness and his mercy. The first reason is because he had us on his mind. I've got Bible. Listen, that's why I read the first couple verses of, of Jonah. Verse chapter 1, listen to it again. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Nineveh is not in the kingdom of God. Nineveh is not a part of the promise unto Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. Nineveh is, are not, Ninevites are not good church-going folk. But the text says, Brother Evans, that in spite of them not worshiping God, they were on his mind. I'm not doing it right, so let me come over here and say it this way. What kind of God would be concerned about folk that don't even worship him. We won't speak to people that don't speak to us, but God is concerned about folk that won't even worship him. I know, I got it, I know what's wrong, I know what's wrong, I know what's wrong. The Ninevites are pagan and, and they worship uh, all kind of other stuff, and yet God still had them on his mind. And Brandon, the reason I shout is because I remember a time when I didn't have God on my mind. I remember a time when the club was on my mind. I remember a time that I did any and everything to end my mess. The car accident could have killed me. That stuff I put in my mouth could have killed me. Some of the things I did could have killed me. I could have been sleeping in my grave, but he had mercy. Do I have anybody in here that knows there was some stuff that you survived, but it was because God had you on his mind? I better catch the train quick because I won't be long. While we sitting here faking the funk, the truth is you ain't always been in church. And even if you were in church, church wasn't in you. <laughs> I don't have any of the right kind of folk in here that were out till Saturday morning, Sunday morning till about two in the morning, but mama said, you gonna go to church anyway. I don't have any of them people in here, I know, cause y'all too saved for that, y'all too. When, when we weren't thinking about God, he was still faithful to us and extended mercy in spite of our mess. Text lets me understand that, that, that I ought to forever be grateful for his mercy. Not only because he allowed me, he, 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 he blessed me when, I wasn't, when I, he wasn't even on my mind, but, but the next thing I believe the text shows is he gave me a way out. Watch the text. The text says, verse chapter 3, um, when Jonah goes to Nineveh, watch what he says. He tells her, he goes, if I had time, I'd tell you <laughs> how, how he gets to Nineveh. Y'all know the story. In chapter 1, God told him to go to Nineveh. Jonah decided he didn't want to go to Nineveh, so he went down to the port going to Tarshish. Funny thing, um, God is going to have his way one way or the other. So he gets on this boat, gets thrown off the boat, ends up in the middle of the sea. Um, Bree, here's what blows me. I used to think that it was kind of hard of God to allow Jonah to be swallowed up by a fish. Can you imagine being in the belly of a whale or a large fish for three days? Can you imagine that everything the fish ate, you getting on you, can you imagine that as he's digesting, that all of that digestion is coming. I thought it was pretty nasty that God would do that to him until I thought about the alternative. Because had the fish not swallowed him, he would have died in the bottom of the sea. And the truth of the matter is sometimes the thing that afflicts us is the thing that saves us. I'm trying, I'm trying, KJ. Um, why, why are you around here crying over spilled milk? 
I can't believe the Lord let that happen to me. It's your affliction that sometimes gets the Lord's attention in the first place. Come here, blind Bartimaeus. The reason God can find Bartimaeus is because he's on the side of the road. And sometimes we're so busy trying to run with the crowd that we miss our blessing is just staying in our position. He, he ends up in the belly of the well, gets thrown up on the shore, and, and after taking the hard road, finally says, I yield God. He goes to Nineveh and he begins to proclaim. And listen to what Jonah says. Jonah says, uh-huh, uh, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. That's, that's what he said. God told him, go preach to Nineveh. And when he gets there, he says, in 40 days, Nineveh shall be overturned, which, which is the second thing that, that helps me understand about God's mercy, and that is he provided a way out. Watch this. When Jonah gets there, he says, 40 more days. Brandon, I, I'm, I'm real interested when God makes uh, specific statements in the text because there's always something behind it. He said, in 40 days. The problem with 40 days, y'all, is they had done enough dirt to be killed that day. Mercy said, I'm going to give you 40 days to get it right. When justice would have said, you die today. I want to thank God for having enough mercy that when he could have taken me out in the midst of my mess, he gave me some extra time. Right? Am I talking right to somebody? Here's what blesses me. He gave them 40 days to repent and turn from their wicked ways. And I don't know who I came to preach to, but you've been straddling the fence between the world and God. I want to talk to some young folk that, that people are telling you what you ought to be doing and you know that the word of God is in you. Don't get caught up letting somebody take you where God didn't call for you to be. But, but, but because of his mercy, he'll give us a way out. 40 days and y'all ought to get it together. 40 days and I won't destroy what I should destroy. And the text says that the king of Nineveh, folk that don't even believe in God, got the memo and said, this God that they serve is able to do exactly what he said. So the best thing for us to do is get our act together and get on board. And they put on sackcloth and ashes and repented before the Lord. Here's what blows my mind. How is it that folk that don't even know God have enough sense to repent before God and turn from their wicked ways? And we show up Sunday after Sunday doing the same thing, snotting at the same altar, but won't turn from our wicked ways. I wish I had somebody in here that said, thank God for a way out. Thank God for 40 more days. Thank God he didn't kill me when he could have. Yeah. Brian, I'm on my way to uh, Browns Grove. That's where I'm going. <laughs> on my way to Browns Grove, and I, I, my desire over the last month has been to try to show us that there is value, there's value in being committed to God. Listen, um, who else you gonna be committed to? You gonna be committed to Hillary? You gonna be committed to the Trumpster? You, you gonna be committed, watch this, watch this. You gonna be committed to the Redskins? Yes. <laughs> Got the nerve to even admit it in church, Lord Jesus. You. <laughs> you, you gonna be committed to the Cowboys? Yeah. Let me give a shout out to 
the Deacon Evans. You gonna be committed to the Raiders? Yeah. <laughs> Bless his heart. Bless his heart. Ain't no need to fake in the funk. You gonna be committed to them Bucks? Absolutely. Where's Marcus when I need him? He's the only other buck in here. Here's the interesting thing about the Skins, the Cowboys, the Raiders, and the Bucks. For all of us, at some point, they have let us down. And what good is it to be committed to somebody that's going to let you down? But I know somebody that's worth being committed to. That's never lost a game. I know somebody that has never disappointed. I know somebody that's worth being committed to because he was first committed to us. I got to go, y'all. But the reason I'm faithful to God is because he'll send me his best. The text says, that Jonah goes to Nineveh when Nineveh is full of mess. But Jonah is one of God's best. Jonah is one that proclaims the gospel. And Nineveh is in the middle of their mess. What kind of God would send his best to some mess? That's like serving, uh-huh, your Moscato when you should have been serving Boone's Farm. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me in here. Uh-huh. Y'all looking at me funny and you know I'm talking right. You don't give the Moscato to the messy people. You give them the Boone's Farm. I mean, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. That's, I don't know. That's what I, that's what I heard. <laughs> uh-huh. That's the first smile I got on some of y'all all morning. But God sends his best to the mess. I, 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 we had at our house, when we were moving in, um, we had some carpet that needed to be cleaned. I called the carpet people and then I canceled on them. And I called them back to reschedule and I canceled on them. And I was shamed the third time because we had, we had so many uh, scheduling difficulties. I was shamed to call back, but I called back a third time. I said, can you come this time? And she said, yes, Pastor Riola. She said, not only am I going to send somebody, I'm going to send you your be my best because I heard you got some, some spots in your carpet. I was appreciative of her for sending her best to my mess. <laughs> and as good as Jonah was to Nineveh, yeah. I know another one that showed up and he was God's best. He came through 40 and two generations to come clean up a whole lot of mess. God loved us so much that he looked at our mess and said they should have been killed. I should have wiped them out. But mercy stepped in right on time. Do I have any messy folk that want to thank God that when he could have killed us, he sent us his best in the form of Jesus. I'm not talking about being committed to church. That's, if that's what you think, I mean, you missed the whole sermon. Because here's what I know about people that are committed to church. As soon as church upsets you, you stop being committed. But if we ever learn to be committed to God, yes. Yes. then the silly stuff yes. that happens in church won't ever mess you up. Until we get our vertical together, our horizontal will always be messed up. Our commitment has to be to him. That's it, that's all. I, I, I'm grateful to God that he has taught me and hopefully taught us that he was committed to us long before we could have ever been committed to him. 
But maybe there's somebody that's still not committed. Maybe you've never made the public declaration. Maybe you've never said, you know what, this Jesus thing, I want to try it on for size. Can I be honest with you? Since I got the microphone, I'll say it. I still got some mess. I, I, I still don't dot every I. I still don't cross every T. But because of my connection to Christ, he gives me mercy in spite of my mess. You can't make that claim until Jesus is your Lord and Savior. So maybe there's somebody this morning, you say, I, I hear you, preacher. I want to be saved today. I, wanna, I don't want to be a Ninevite. I want to be a part of the kingdom of God. Is there one today that will give your life to Jesus Christ? Don't worry about the church. We'll get to that later. I'm talking about you want to come to Christ. While you're pondering that, maybe there's somebody else that says, I get it. I've been like John. I've been running the wrong way even when I knew where the right way was. You want to recommit yourself back to him today? Is there one that says, I want to recommit? I want to get back right with the Lord. Finally, maybe there's somebody looking for a place to work out your soul salvation. You say, but you need a church home. We want to recommend Union Branch, the city of hope. Is there one? 